About this time war broke out in the region. King Amraphel of Babylonia, King Arioch of Elazar, King Kedorlaoma of Elam, and King Tidal of Goim fought against King Bera of Sodom, King Bersha of Gomorrah, King Shinab of Adma, King Shemeba of Zeboim, and the King of Bela, also called Zoar. This second group of kings joined forces in Sidim Valley, that is, the Valley of the Dead Sea. For twelve years they had been subject to King Kedorlaoma, but in the thirteenth year they rebelled against him. One year later Kedorlaoma and his allies arrived and defeated the Rephates at Ashtaroth Karnam, the Zuzites at Ham, the Emites at Sheva Kiriahim, and the Horites at Mount Sire, as far as El Paran at the edge of the wilderness. Then they turned back and came to En Mishpat, now called Kadesh, and conquered all the territory of the Amalekites, and also the Amorites living in Hazazon Tamar. Then the rebel kings of Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboim, and Bela, also called Zoar, prepared for battle in the Valley of the Dead Sea. They fought against King Kedorlaoma of Elam, King Tidal of Goim, King Amraphel of Babylonia, and King Arioch of Elazar, four kings against five. As it happened, the Valley of the Dead Sea was filled with tar pits. And as the army of the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, some fell into the tar pits, while the rest escaped into the mountains. The victorious invaders then plundered Sodom and Gomorrah and headed for home, taking with them all the spoils of war and the food supplies. They also captured Lot, Abram's nephew who lived in Sodom, and carried off everything he owned. But one of Lot's men escaped and reported everything to Abram the Hebrew, who was living near the oak grove belonging to Mamre the Amorite. Mamre and his relatives, Eshkol and Anna, were Abram's allies. When Abram heard that his nephew Lot had been captured, he mobilized the 318 trained men who had been born into his household. Then he pursued Kedorlaomer's army until he caught up with them at Dan. There he divided his men and attacked during the night. Kedorlaomer's army fled, but Abram chased him as far as Hoba, north of Damascus. Abram recovered all the goods that had been taken, and he brought back his nephew Lot with his possessions and all the women and other captives. After Abram returned from his victory over Kedorlaomer and all his allies, the king of Sodom went out to meet him in the valley of Sheva, that is, the king's valley. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem and a priest of God Most High, brought Abram some bread and wine. Melchizedek blessed Abram with this blessing. Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has defeated your enemies for you. Then Abram gave Melchizedek a tenth of all the goods he had recovered. The king of Sodom said to Abram, Give back my people who were captured. But you may keep for yourself all the goods you have recovered. Abram replied to the king of Sodom, I solemnly swear to the Lord, God Most High, Creator of heaven and earth, that I will not take so much as a single thread or sandal thong from what belongs to you. Otherwise you might say, I am the one who made Abram rich. I will accept only what my young warriors have already eaten, and I request that you give a fair share of the goods to my allies, Anna, Eshkol, and Mamre. The Lord's covenant promised to Abram some time later, the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision and said to him, Do not be afraid, Abram, for I will protect you, and your reward will be great. But Abram replied, O sovereign Lord, what good are all your blessings when I don't even have a son? 
Since you've given me no children, Eliezer of Damascus, a servant in my household, will inherit all my wealth. You have given me no descendants of my own, so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the Lord said to him, No, your servant will not be your heir, for you will have a son of your own who will be your heir. Then the Lord took Abram outside and said to him, Look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. Then the Lord told him, I am the Lord who brought you out of your of the Chaldeans to give you this land as your possession. But Abram replied, O sovereign Lord, how can I be sure that I will actually possess it? The Lord told him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. So Abram presented all these to him and killed them. Then he cut each animal down the middle and laid the halves side by side. He did not, however, cut the birds in half. Some vultures swooped down to eat the carcasses, but Abram chased him away. As the sun was going down, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a terrifying darkness came down over him. Then the Lord said to Abram, You can be sure that your descendants will be strangers in a foreign land, where they will be oppressed as slaves for four hundred years. But I will punish the nation that enslaves them, and in the end they will come away with great wealth. As for you, you will die in peace and be buried at a ripe old age. After four generations your descendants will return here to this land, for the sins of the Amorites do not yet warrant their destruction. After the sun went down and darkness fell, Abram saw a smoking firepot and a flaming torch pass between the halves of the carcasses. So the Lord made a covenant with Abram that day and said, I have given this land to your descendants, all the way from the border of Egypt to the great river Euphrates, the land now occupied by the Kenites, Kenizzites, Kudmonites, Hittites, Perizzites, Rephates, Amorites, Canaanites, Girgashites, and Jebusites.